Hi everyone, I'm back. I'm back from Sedona. We took a break the last couple of weeks from making live videos because we were putting on my first event in two years and we had so much fun. My entire team went there and we put on this event which I called Stepping Into Your Power and I had so much fun doing it. Now I'm back in Southern California and it is so cold today. It's wet, it's cold, the skies are gray and you know it's bucketing with rain. It doesn't feel like Southern California at all. I mean I could be in England. We've got the fireplace going just to stay warm and I'm dressed super cozy today having my one of my little cups of tea. Um, so I thought I'd pop in and speak to you about a topic that's kind of dear to my heart and I will explain why it's dear to my heart. The topic actually I call it um, being spiritual almost killed me and so you're probably wondering uh, you know why like why that would be dear to my heart. So from time to time People actually say to me and have said to me, like, I mean, in recent years, that, oh, you should be more spiritual. Like, um, your photos have you having too much fun and, and doing stuff that's, like, just fun and, and you're, like, wearing different clothes and you're shopping and you're doing things and you shouldn't be so immersed in the material. You should be more spiritual because you had this near-death experience. So... I love that people say that because it always gives me um, material to talk about. So I love hearing your comments and, and feedback and everything. So what I wanted to share with you is that before I had my near-death experience, I was extremely spiritual. And I mean extremely spiritual. So what do I mean by that? I was someone who really, really believed that we had to work at being spiritual. This was long before I was even diagnosed with cancer or anything. I used to follow all the different spiritual teachings. I used to always believe that I needed to meditate more, that I needed to pray more. I used to believe that I had to be more, do more service, more shava, seva. Um, and so I was always doing things to be more spiritual. I believed the ego was bad, and so I was always suppressing my own ego. Um, every time I felt a need to serve myself or a need to, for attention, I would tell myself, oh, that's my ego. Ego is bad, so I would repress my ego. I believed that it is better to give than to receive. So I would give and give of myself and never was never able to receive. And then I was diagnosed with cancer, which today, um, after the near-death experience, I know a lot of it was because I was so repressed and never allowed myself to be who I am. So even while I was going through the cancer, I believed it was better to give than to receive. The cancer didn't heal me of my affliction of basically being a doormat, repressing my ego, making myself invisible. It was death that actually made me realize the truth. So even while going through the cancer, I would worry more about other people who would want to help me through my illness. And I would be like, no, no, it's okay. I don't need your help. I'm fine. Because I kept feeling that it's bad to receive. I also believed that, um, that I had to clear all my past negative karma. And people would tell me things, you know, uh, spiritual people would tell me things like, you got cancer because it's your bad karma. So you have to do, be of more service to get rid of the bad karma. Because I was trying every type of healing modality and nothing was working for me. And so that's why people said, oh, it must be your karma. I think you need to be more of service. You need to go and help more charities and you need to clear all your past karma. And so I did. I was doing more and being, and, and being more of service and praying more and meditating more until I died. And when I was on the other side, I realized, oh my gosh, Doing all of that stuff is what made me repressed, 
uh, depressed, unhappy, never able to receive, never allowing myself to be who I am, repressing my ego to the point that it made me invisible. My soul was never allowed to shine. And that's why I got sick. And that's why I died. It was all my beliefs about what spirituality should be. And so when I was on the other side, I realized that we are all spiritual. We can't not be because it's who we are. We come from spirit and we return to spirit. And so no matter who you are, you are a spiritual being. But the idea is to realize you're a, spirit, a, a spiritual being and to stay connected to your spirit. And our spirit, my spirit, our spirit, chose to be in this physical at this point in time. My spirit chose to come back and to experience this physical life and to experience it fully and to embrace it fully, which is what I try to do. Um, and so I realize that being myself, being authentic and being myself is the same as being spiritual. It's one and the same because you are born in perfection. And so the problem really is that we're born as spiritual beings. But what happens is that over the years, that realization that we are spiritual beings starts to erode. And that's what kind of takes us off our path. That's what allows us to accumulate all these beliefs about ourselves. And sometimes we, um, what we don't realize is that even our spiritual beliefs can actually disempower us and make us believe that we are less than and make us believe that we are not spiritual. But if you're always hearing this message that you have to be more, you have to be more in service, you, it's, you have to give and not receive, and you have to do this, and you have to meditate more, and those messages, what they're actually doing, like constantly hearing that from spiritual teachings, what it's doing is that it's actually causing you to believe that I am not good enough as I am. I am not a spiritual being, and so I have to work hard at being spiritual. Whereas nothing could be further from the truth. You are your soul that comes in through this body is a facet of God. It is a facet of the universe. It's chosen to come in, come through this body to experience this physical, this material existence. And you are a spiritual being. Um, I often tell people it's not about doing more, learning more, becoming more spiritual. It's actually, you're born spiritual, but at this stage in your life, what you need to do is you need to undo. So it's not about doing, it's about undoing. I often um, liken it to the analogy of Michelangelo. Some of you may have heard uh, that Michelangelo, who is the wonderful artist, sculptor, who, he's a sculptor who creates these beautiful statues of angels out of these blocks of stone or marble. And um, one day somebody asked him, how do you create these amazing statues from these blocks of stone? You don't use any plans or any, um, any blueprints. And his response was that, that the angel is already there in that block of marble. I just chip away until I set the angel free. So basically what he's doing, he's chipping away at what is not part of the angel and he sets the angel free. This is a great analogy for who you are. You are a spiritual being. But when we come here, we kind of adapt or ad uh, adopt all these beliefs about ourselves, these beliefs that we are not good enough, that the ego is bad and I have to repress who I am. Um, I used to take on a lot of these teachings about that. And I realized I repressed my ego to the point of becoming invisible. I, um, I believed it was better to give than receive to the point where I wasn't able to receive, which means I wasn't able to recharge my own batteries I, until I was completely depleted. I believed that I had accumulated bad karma to the point where all I was focused on was reducing karma, that 
I was not able to fully embrace life and fully embrace who I am and who I came here to be. So I share this story so that you don't make the same mistake as I do. And to me, when I say being spiritual means being yourself, what I mean is that when you are feeling joyful and happy and when your spirit is expressing itself, you are being spiritual. And for me, sometimes it means meditating. Sometimes it could even be talking. So to me, meditating is listening to the other side, to spirit. And praying is talking to spirit. So sometimes I'm talking to spirit. Sometimes I'm listening to spirit. But sometimes what I need to make me feel good is to go shopping for a pair of shoes. That's what uplifts me. For me, the act of shopping for a pair of shoes or eating chocolate can be as spiritual as meditating. Um, and it doesn't make you any less spiritual no matter what you do, as long as you do it from the place of love, as long as you do it from a place of embracing your spirit your soul and knowing that this soul has come here to express itself fully because you were born perfect. Um, when you die, you will return to perfection and, uh, the, and, and it's your belief that you are imperfect. That is what holds you back. It's your belief that you constantly need to work on yourself because that belief is what gives you the message that there is something wrong with you, but there can't be because your soul is always perfect. Just allow it to shine and allow it to just be who it came here to be and allow yourself to be as you, as you can be. Um, so thank you for tuning in. And of course, I'll be back next week for more. But also, please, um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you love this message. And if you love my messages or follow me on Facebook or Instagram. For me, when you follow me and when you subscribe, it actually helps me to create more free content for you like this. So I would love it if you follow me. Also, we, have, we will be posting a whole bunch of photos from my Sedona event, and I am hoping that 2022 will allow me to do more live events. I really hope that the world um, opens up and that things all work out and that we're all able to see each other a lot more face to face. So thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, and just a quick shout out. I received a lot of wonderful gifts from people in Sedona. Um, I will try and present them as I use them. I've got beautiful teacups, a beautiful Ganesha here. Thank you to all of the people who attended the event. And also um, thank you to everybody who's tuned in today. Love you all so much. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye.